Tim, will you stick around for just a minute? We want to just uh, get more on the market implications, bringing in Shannon Sakosha. She's chief investment officer at NB Private Wealth, along with fast money trader Steve Grasso, who is the CEO of Grasso Global. Steve, are you trading right now? What, are you making any moves on the back of this? Or just what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, Jim touches on a lot of important points. And, and you started off leading with, does that small cap uh, trade unwind? So the small cap trade, Kelly, it was obviously driven by the idea that the market finally agreed that rates were moving lower in, in probably the near term. And on the back of the horrible Biden debate, Trump's odds of being president went through the roof. So you had th both those things coupled together True. rally the overall market. And, and the uh, small caps have underperformed for such a great length that it had to reverse at some point, and people got blue in the face waiting for it. But I think that you're going to see this time period where maybe a little consolidation, but I think it's going to reverse, and that money will be put back into the MAG-7, or as you know, Jim just coined a new word, the, <laughs> the Mega-7. So, so if, you, if you wind up having those names really start to fuel, we're, we're only... You know, 30 days out of the Democratic, uh, the Democrats convention, and we're only 100 and some odd days out of the election. So you're really looking at feet to the flame. Last thing, I think it's really interesting how uh, President Obama, who is the uh, patriarch of the Democrats, as Trump is to the Republicans, mm -hmm. doesn't really talk about Kamala Harris. He talks about an outstanding candidate. So I think we're in for a lot more volatility, but I agree with the previous statements. This is just going to be the extension, if not a push further left for the Democrats' agenda. You know, Shannon, people say markets don't like uncertainty. Is that going to be true for the time being? I think so, Kelly. I mean, if you look back on past presidential years, that uncertainty really starts to come home to roost in uh, sort of the post-Labor Day to about the third week of November. Um, but just given what we've seen, we actually thought some of that might have been pulled forward, just mm -hmm. given the fact that we kind of knew which two candidates we were dealing with. Now, however, there is an opportunity to look for, um, for that volatility to happen a little bit sooner. I, I think the one thing to really think about is in terms of what's going to drive the market in the second half of the year. There can be a lot of pre-positioning, if you will, in terms of where do you want to be from November 5th to the end of the year. But history, history gives you some precedent that that's likely to be to, to see the market move higher on that lack of uncertain on that on that new certainty, if you will. Most importantly, though, is like what's going to happen with earnings in the second half of the year. Sure. And I think that even if we were to see Biden still in the race here, um, we needed to see that that and that small cap rotation to be sustained. It would really have been on margin in the second half of the year. And so I think with earnings, with these key earnings, as Jim mentioned, coming up right ahead of us, there does need to be a, sort of a take a step back and look at the bigger picture for investors. We don't know what's going to translate from these campaign promises. We don't know what's going to happen with the platform. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole heck of a lot to happen between now and November in terms of positioning for that.